I want to go into a few important areas from the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In today's world, obesity is on the rise. Now, if it is due to a sickness, then it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we are to be blamed for the obesity, then we are not fulfilling the amana of our bodies. My dear brothers in Islam, I personally have not come across a single description of a notable companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ever being described with a pot belly. No. If you look at the description of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a beautiful description, and when it came to his upper body, it was a tapered body in the sense his chest and his abdomen were tapered. He did not have a protruding belly. A lot of us today, we have protruding bellies and we are not even motivated to do anything about it. Once there was a man in the midst of Umar radiallahu an. Now this man had a protruding belly. Umar radiallahu an looks at the man and he asks him, Ya Rajul, what is this? Now the man, he taps his belly and he says, This is Baraka from Allah. Umar radiallahu an looks at the man and he says, La, this is a punishment from Allah, a test from Allah, a torment from Allah. So as you can see, this was the mentality of the Sahaba. Very fit, very able, very lean individuals. Khalid ibn al-Walid Another warrior, him and many of the Sahaba, they were individuals. They would ride horses. Today, you know, when picturing it, it might seem easy. But for those of you who have actually ridden horses, you would know that horses are massive. And not only the height, most of the time it is challenging for us to get on top of those horses. Why? We have back aches and this ache and that ache. We need someone to help us to get on top of the horse. And by the way, the horse has a saddle. The horse has stirrups. We put one leg in and then the other and we get on. They, the Sahaba, used to ride bareback. You know how challenging it is to ride a horse bareback. And that too, an Arabian horse, subhanAllah. Arabian fast steeds, bareback. Some of them could run with the horse and jump onto the horse, subhanAllah. This was the stamina, endurance. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was right at the top in terms of fitness, in terms of endurance, in terms of stamina. Today, we have become very sluggish. Our dietary habits are unhealthy. No fitness whatsoever in our lives. This must change. Go into the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at how he carried himself with food. Look at what an active lifestyle he led. And let us all change our lives, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Number one, let's start with mindful eating. This is a practice deeply rooted in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that a human being does not fill any container worse than his own stomach. It is sufficient for a human to eat a few mouthfuls to keep his spine straight. But if he must fill it, if you need to eat more than a few mouthfuls, then go with portions. Divide your stomach. One third for food, one third for drink, and one third for air. Mindful eating, where you are mindful of every morsel, every mouth of food that you put into your mouth. And part of mindful eating is to chew your food thoroughly. A lot of us today, we just gulp the food down, which is a very unhealthy practice. It is from the teachings of the Prophet wasallam to chew your food thoroughly so that you break it down into smaller particles, making it easier for your body to process and extract the nutrients from that food. Number two, balanced meals. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam was known for his balanced diet. In his life, we find a beautiful blueprint for what we now regard as a balanced diet. He consumed a healthy variety of foods. He incorporated dates, barley, honey, olive oil, milk, which are all superfoods in today's standards. Our houses of nutrition, subhanallah, at that time they didn't have processed foods and even if they did, the Prophet would not have indulged. Very unhealthy today's processed food industry, fast food. A lot of us for the sake of convenience, we turn to it, but very unhealthy. Protect yourself, protect the generations after you. Indulging in it once in a while for the sake of convenience may be okay, 
but for those of us who are indulging in it on a regular basis it causes a lot of complications within your body avoid sausages all these processed types of meat try to stick to wholesome food halal and tayyiba halal yes you need to look at it being halal and tayyiba as well that's what's interesting in the ayah allah didn't say only eat halal halal and tayyiba good and wholesome foods don't put things that are poisonous into your body things that are going to cause you harm today if you look at our diets heavily carb based and on top of that a lot of processed stuff going into it you are what you eat if you're putting in healthy things into your body then you're going to be healthy at times we eat processed food and after eating we don't feel good we feel like oh why did i even eat this when you eat wholesome food you feel good you feel satiated you feel light have you ever felt bad after eating honey dates good vegetables healthy protein healthy meat no whenever you eat processed food whenever you eat food with high sugar you crash you feel so bad you don't feel productive you feel lethargic you don't feel motivated to do good things the next area that i want to quickly focus on is hydration today a lot of us don't hydrate ourselves properly and this is why you feel zapped you feel like you've got the splitting headache or we tend to hydrate ourselves again with the wrong things some of us are living on energy drinks a new fad very bad for your health a lot of sugar in it all these processed drinks fizzy drinks extremely bad for your health all these energy drinks packed with unhealthy ingredients you think that oh you know what i'm getting a kick out of it it's going to help me do this help me do that once in a while there's a dire need maybe you're driving a long distance you need to stay up then maybe a few sips just to keep you going if there's no other choice if you can have something like a coffee or a tea that is better if you have no choice then maybe drinking something like that a little bit is fine i know the older generation has not really fallen prey to this but the younger generation is falling prey to it look after your children look after your offspring they are an amana from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so hydrate yourself with water hydrate yourself with natural thirst quenchers opt for wholesome fruits like watermelon king coconut coconut water all these things are healthy and this is you fulfilling your haq towards the amana that allah gave you this body is an amana the health is an amana do not abuse it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the soul go work out lose the fat go for a walk go for a swim go for a run move don't be stationary if you are stagnant you're going to become murky and dirty water running water is active pure full of energy so get out my dear brothers encourage the younger generation too they are glued in front of the screens in front of TVs and in front of playstations get them out make them active get them involved in permissible sports and let us become an active community just as how the sahaba were ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'in just as how muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam was 